Mr. Charlie McCoy, thank you so much for being here with me. Hey, I'm happy to be here. I've been learning quite some time and uh, uh, it's great to come back. So I'm looking forward to the show tonight. We're at Pizza Express Live in Hoburn and uh, you've got a great band. We just heard your sound check sounding really, really nice. This, uh, this is the band of Robert Wells. Robert Wells is one of the best piano players I've ever heard in my life. And uh, I mean, he's like a giant artist in Sweden and uh, he's big in China. And uh, he's, uh, I mean, this guy, as we have a saying in the southern part of the United States, these dogs can hunt, <laughs> you know, they can. These dogs can hunt. Obviously, you're a multi-instrumentalist, but I'm interested in your harmonica playing, uh, first well, and foremost. That's, that's the reason I can do all the others, too. <laughs> yeah? Uh, I, you know, I never would have gotten the door with any of the others. Uh, okay, I'm, I can play these instruments, but I'm average on them. Uh, and harmonica was my ticket mm. to kind of break through. Did harp come first for you? Or did well, you no, I started harmonica when I was eight, mm. and then later that year I got a guitar. And I, I, to be honest, I never was really interested in really interested in harmonica until I was sixteen, and I heard a Jimmy Reed record. Oh yeah, yeah. And then I got into it big time, and I discovered Little Walter. Mm -hmm who to me is still the best blues player ever. Yeah. Was the Jimmy Reed tune, was it one of those ones with the, the top end of the harmonica? Oh yeah, yeah, it's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so yeah. distinctive. Yeah, and uh, so then, uh, like I said, I got, I got really interested again, and uh, it, it turned out to be the right thing. <laughs> And the amount of stuff you've done, I mean, it's it's just even difficult to think about the amount of sessions you, you've been on, um, but there's some big ones. Did you play the harmonica on The Boxer by yes. Simon Garfunkel? Yes. That record was in my parents' record collection, and even before I played harmonica, that was a really distinctive sound. Was it a bass one or just bass. an extra bass? Yeah, it was a bass, yeah. yeah. You can hear that lovely yeah. underneath. Yeah. And it was, uh, I must say that it was Paul Simon's idea okay. to use the bass, and uh, to be honest, he dictated every note. Oh, did he? But that's the way he made records, yeah. and uh, hey, hindsight proves he was right. <laughs> he knows a thing or two, I suppose. <laughs> you don't mind somebody telling you what to do if they know what they're doing. Yeah. 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 And you, you must have met some, I mean, big guys. You, you, you did stuff with Elvis, is that right? Yeah, I did twelve albums with Elvis. Yeah, uh, some of seven of them were movie soundtracks, mm. but you know they made albums out of all. Of them. Yeah, and you know I record sixty two. I recorded with Cliff Richards. Oh yeah, he recorded in Nashville once. Yeah, yeah. Gordon Lightfoot, uh, and then everybody in country music. Yeah, Johnny Cash, Dolly Parton, Tammy Wynette, Conway Twitty. You know, George yeah. Jones. Yeah, I've, and then for everyone I've played with that people have heard of. I've played with 10 they haven't heard of. Yeah. 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 The big names that you've, you've played with, have you always had a chance to hang out with them or would you sometimes do your session? Your, your part would be a separate, you just go in and kind of overdub? Or... Well, we were, this was back in those days, uh, you, there wasn't much hanging out. You were going from session to session and, uh, mm -hmm. you know, after a three or four days, a th four, three or four session day, man, you're just, you're looking for a bed. Cause uh, you know, it, the way they made records in Nashville was, was uh, quite different than most uh, recording centers. Mm -hmm. I had this interview some time back talking about, the guy said, well, what about the Wrecking Crew and Muscle Shoals and Memphis and Motown? I said, let me tell you the difference. Wrecking Crew had written arrangements Every session was written. Memphis, Muscle Shoals, Motown had no clock. In Nashville, we were expected to do three and four records on songs we'd never heard in three hours. And that's the way all that classic country music was recorded. Yeah. Those musicians were brilliant. They could hear a song, never heard it, learn it, make a record probably 45 minutes to an hour, that's it. Mm -hmm. And then wipe the slate dry like that because here comes another song yeah. in them, you know. 
And uh, it took me a while to get used to that, mm -hmm. but those guys were brilliant, and what an education for a 20-year-old yeah. kid, you know? Yeah. I bet you got some good chops just because you were playing all the time. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it was uh, it was amazing. And, and those records, you hear them back today, and they still sound amazing, you know? Uh, Everly Brothers, Roy Orbison, uh, you know, uh, Brenda Lee, Dolly, you know, Patsy Klein. I mean, yeah. the records are great records. <laughs> I came straight here from, I've, I've been playing and teaching at the uh, National Harmonica League, which is a charity over here that does harmonica events, their uh, annual festival. And I went to someone else's workshop and he was teaching Orange Blossom Special and he put the video of you playing that. Yeah. <laughs> um, oh, that that's uh, become a bit of an iconic piece, obviously, for harmonica playing. Well, it's become my kind of signature song, you mm. know. I, I can't... Uh, I've, in the last oh, two, two and two-thirds years, I've played the Grand Ole Opry 27 times, and uh, I have to play it every time I play there, you know. And Are you it, sick of it? <laughs> no, to be honest, I'm not, because it's always a different audience. Yeah. And it's always a new challenge because uh, I just keep trying to find new things on it, you know, and, and it goes by so fast sometimes it, <laughs> it's hard to find something new. But uh, yeah, it's uh, it's one of those uh, songs that it, obviously it was meant to be a fiddle song mm. and I recorded it 1965 with Johnny Cash mm. and he, he did a vocal version and he said, hey, why don't you play a solo? So I was trying to figure out, wow, because uh, all I'd ever heard was a fiddle do it, you know, and I thought, you know what? Uh, so I started fooling with these two harmonicas, and, and I worked something out, and it was, it, it worked pretty good, and uh, of course the tempo was really slow when he did the vocal version. After the session, he came over to me and he said, can you show me how to do that? <laughs> I, said, I said, well, I'll tell you what, John, here's the way you do it, and I'm giving you these two harps. <laughs> but after the session I went home and I thought man I really like that I gotta learn to play that better you know <laughs> and I recorded it once and then I recorded it four years later at another tempo right yeah <laughs> cause it you know I, I had been playing it a lot and I got where I could play it faster so yeah, yeah. that's it to the Old Grey Whistle Test, which I don't know if you ever got in the US, but it was a big thing here. Um, and, and so many people know that tune just from, just from that show. Well, actually, uh, you know, in America, we a song like that, we call it Mailbox Money. <laughs> okay. You know, because uh, I was one of the writers on it. Yeah. And it, what, it ran eight years on the BBC yeah. in prime time? Yeah. I mean, yeah. It, yeah. <laughs> I bet you got something for that. <laughs> Well, it was nice. It was very nice. You yeah. Know? Oh, yeah. I remember when the, the guy called and said, hey, uh, some TV show in England wants to use that song as a theme. And we said, go ahead. Yeah. You know? And it, it, we never expected how big it was going to be or how yeah. long it would work. Yeah. yeah. It's one of the few tunes that almost everyone says, oh, how do you, you play that one? You know, because it's so well known here. Uh, you're probably too young to remember Val Dunnigan. Yeah. Val Dunnigan was a... a show host on BBC, an Irish guy that lived here, mm. and uh, he was, he fooled with the harmonica some, in, yeah. in 1980 I went on his TV show, and he had, he had been trying to learn Stone Fox Chase, so yeah. we, we played it together on his TV show. Um, yeah. <laughs> With all the stuff you've done, 
I mean, you know, you look back to the thousands of sessions you must have. Do they blur into one, or do you kind of have distinct memories of all the different stuff you've done? I remember songs, uh, records, you know, great records. Uh, mm. I remember uh, to begin with when you're in a when you're in a session and they start playing a song for you and everybody in the room thinks it's a hit. Mm. I mean, every once in a while that would happen. Pretty Woman was one of those. Yeah. When they started playing that song, everybody in the room, we we're all looking at each other like, "Oh boy, <laughs> we're onto something good here." Uh, the record by George Jones, He Stopped Loving Her Today, was the same deal. They started playing the song, and everybody in the room was like, okay, yeah, yeah this is <laughs> this is going to be something. Yeah. So those are great moments, you know, when you, when you can predict it. And then all of a sudden, you do something that nobody ever expects is going to be anything, and it goes, mm. yeah, which goes to show that the general public looks at music different than we do, you know? Yeah, that's so, true. All you do is make what you feel and put it out there and see yeah. if anybody likes it. Yeah. You mentioned earlier, and I'd, I'd seen online that you've done a bit of instructional stuff. Um, I'm interested in kind of, you know, have you done much teaching and what kind of what, and how did you learn? Did you just teach yourself? I, I have, no, to begin with, I haven't done any teaching as such, one on one teaching. Yeah. I have an instruction DVD. Well, it used to be a video, now it's a DVD. Mm -hmm. And I have online instruction from Corsica. Okay. It's, it's, it's a French-based website. It's yeah. called the I Music School. Mm -hmm. And the only problem with it is that the whole website is only in French, and, and everybody in America that tries to get into it, they can't figure out how to get into it, you know? But, so, which leaves the door open for me, because I say, uh, they, I'll get email, well, we want to go to this website, but we can't figure it out. And I said, mm -hmm. listen, why don't you just buy my DVD? Because it's got the same material on it. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> no, actually, when I started, I was eight years old. I got one out of a comic book. And uh, there wasn't anybody in our whole county who could play one. I had nobody to talk to, nobody to learn from. And I just sit around. and. But I had a better than average year, and I could hear melodies. And I'd just sit around and... Fooled around with it till I could find the melody. Yeah, yeah. That that was completely self-taught. Yeah. And I want to ask you briefly about harp tunings because I I've never played country tuned harp. Well, I've fiddled with them, but I don't gig them. Um, it, it, are they a kind of big part of your your set, or would it just be Richter tuning was your kind of go-to harp? Well, I play country tuning probably eighty-five percent of the time, maybe more, because I'm. I play lots of melodies, mm. and you know, uh, if you're playing in second position, cross mm. harp, mm. you know, if you don't have it, you got a dominant seventh up there, mm -hmm. and most most melodies don't have a dominant seventh unless mm. it's the blues, mm. and uh, mm. but I got to tell you the way I discovered it, because it's a very interesting story. So I put out a record, a, an album, in 1972, uh, it was self-titled album, and I did the song Danny Boy. Yeah. So I played the verse on a B flat, you know, cross harp key of F. And when it come to the chorus, it needed that major seven. Mm -hmm. So I switched to an F yeah. and played it straight harp, yeah. but bending in that bottom thing, you know. So it was on the album. The album did very well. One day, a guy, we had a, we, the record company had a little lounge where artists could hang out. And the secretary called back and said, there's a man from New York that wants to talk to you. I said, okay, send him on back. This guy was a 65-year-old house painter, and he said to me, I've always played chromatic, but I heard your albums, and I decided I wanted to learn to play tin hole. And he said, there's one song you recorded, I can't figure out how you did it. And so he's got my curiosity, you know, I'm trying to, which one's he gonna say? He said, Danny boy. And he said, before I could say a word, he said, now here's what I figured you did. You took, the, you took the plate off of this harmonica and you got a razor blade and you did, and he, he showed me that, he put it back together and he was so nervous, you know, he couldn't hardly play, but he played and he played the chorus to Danny Boy on this. And he said, 
that's the way you do it, isn't it? And I said, no, but that's the way I'm going to do it from now on. <laughs> so a guy off the street showed me yeah. that. Yeah. So for anyone who, who doesn't know, that's just raising the, the five draw a half step or something. Yep, yeah. yep, yep. And then I've got another thing I do. I'll raise the, the three below a whole step. Mm -hmm. And a lot of guys call that Patty Richter, but the normal Patty Richter, you don't mess with the five draw. Mm -hmm. But I raise it too. Ah, okay. So you've got a pure scale down there mm -hmm. with no bends at all. Mm -hmm. And some of the songs I play, like Celtic songs and beautiful ballads, mm -hmm. I like to play that that two note, the ray note, without bending it, you know? Mm. So that's that's why I do that. Yeah. But I don't do it very much. Yeah. I don't play that very much. Anyway, that's that's my three things I do, the normal yeah. tuning, the country, and that yeah. modified Patty Richter. Well, it, it all sounds beautiful, and, uh, you know, I hope you keep doing what you're doing. People yeah. always, curse most of the people that talk this, want to talk are harmonica players. And one thing I said, don't forget this, Every one of my records has fantastic musicians on it. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. Because I'm in Nashville. They're they're coming out of the woodworks. Mm -hmm. Great players. And I use as many of them as I can. Mm -hmm. And if you like the record, listen to the band too. Because they are great. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. I've read... Uh... A, another interview you'd done online, and I can't remember how you worded it, but you were you were sort of talking about the fact that essentially you're there to serve the song. You know, it's not about being flash, although it's great when someone has a load of licks. But you know, kind of the, the, at the end of the day, it's about the music, and I thought that was important and sometimes gets overlooked. Well, when I when I was allowed to start playing sessions with that huge that great group in Nashville, they taught me real quick. They said, look, here's the way we look at this. The song and the singer is a picture. We're the frame. Our job is to frame the picture, not to distract from it. Because one day I got called out for overplaying, you know, with a fe female singer, and I was playing behind her, and I was feeling pretty good about myself, <laughs> you know. And, and, uh, and the guy, session leader, kind of pulled me over on the side, and he said, hey, uh, you know, you... You're playing a little bit too much, you know, and 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 with a girl singer, you're right there in their same register, you know. Mm -hmm. And I thought about it a minute, and I said, "He's right. He's absolutely right." Mm -hmm. And man, after that, my motto became "Less is more," you know, mm -hmm. and that still is. Yeah, yeah. still doing a lot of sessions yeah i still 40 or 50 a year you know and i'm not playing with many big stars anymore but i don't care about that i mean i'm i still i want to play with people that love music you know yeah. and uh yeah in fact i did one yesterday in in uh, stockholm yeah you know <laughs> a piano player doing an instrumental album want me to play a couple solos yeah, yeah so well, you've got a great band tonight. I'm going to let you get off and relax a bit before you start. Okay. With Mr. McCoy, thank you hey, so much. For thank you so time. much. And uh, hey, if y'all, if you get a chance, come on down here and listen to this band. I mean, this is this is a treat, boy. Uh, you won't hear many like this. I'm looking forward to it. <laughs>